Hi Groovy people, it's me, Zen Jen. How are you? Uh, me? Had a pretty busy week uh, attempting to hire um, people for our home program for my son. And so I'm training people on these exact methods that I'm giving you um, on this series called um, This Is How We Do It. Uh, this is number seven that I'm going to be presenting to you today. Um, engaging gurus. I think it's number seven. Let me look at that one more time. Ah. It's number eight. Mm. Number eight. Engaging gurus. So, um, in the item system, again, that's in the moment, uh, inner <laughs> integrative um, teaching method, is uh, item, I-T-M. And so, in the item method, uh, how you engage your guru, meaning your student, your child, your... I consider my children gurus because they teach me so much. Um, so, here's some ways. Uh, eye contact. Um, eye contact, number one. Uh, you enter uh, into a scene. This is the way to get the attention. Uh, then two, you greet up close. Um, many kids, you know, have a few tendencies um, that you need to be extremely intuitive about, you know, like um, behaviors that might put you a little bit at risk. But um, if you're very intuitive, usually you can uh, get closer in without um, being uh, at risk. So, enter, greet up close, um, sign, look, and say, look at me. So we use this. This is everyone, I encourage you to make up your own signs, you know, if you need to. Because many times when Justin was first beginning uh, this method, uh, he looked down a lot. So I'd lay my hand under his under his chin and I'd be like, look, look. And, and then I, now I'm more specific when I'm teaching him. I say, look at my mouth, look at my eyes look at what I'm doing or look over there. Um, using that look as your basic tool of engagement is great because you know how many times we use look uh, in conversation quite a bit. Uh, hey, look over there. Hey, look at this. And so um, number three is use the sign. Look, look at me. Um, I would say speak at a tone that you typically use with um, any of your friends. Try not to speak at children. <laughs> like, look at me, you know, um, or hi, how are you, Justin? It's just a bit much. Uh, it's not necessary. Most of the time, uh, they can hear you. <laughs> even though they're not responding verbally. Or perhaps even non-verbally initially, but expect that they can hear you. Always expect that they know what you're doing and what you're talking about. That's how I've always spoken to my kids. Um, this is part of the item method. Again, this is my method. Uh, that I work with my kids and uh, other kids with. Um, so, you know, take it or leave it, but this is how I feel is uh, efficient. And um, then name. Like, for instance, number four would be use the name. Um, I see you, Justin. You know, I would say, I see you, Justin. And then, I like how your hair looks today. Um, you know, Giving a compliment is, um, rather than asking for something, you know, always asking for someone to look at you and, and tell me what you want, tell me what you need, you know, tell me how you feel, you know, it's, it's a lot of demand for an initial greeting and we usually don't do that to people, you know, we say how are you and we don't really care if, you know, they, they answer or not, so, you know, um, most of us don't answer the real thing, so don't expect, you know, that, that this a child will do anything out of the ordinary of normal conversation. Uh, so, whatever normal is, right? Um, so the other uh, things I'll just go ahead and read uh, in my presentation that I have here uh, outlined. But I'm um, engaging tone. Use an engaging tone. So interesting, uh, interested, so engaged. Pay attention and totally available for interaction regardless of how uncomfortable the weights are uh, or how unsure you are if the message is being received. 
So even if you're not sure that these kids are hearing you, or if your kid is really getting everything you're saying, just keep keep making um, you know steps to take uh, towards giving them uh, a normal a conversation that you would typically have with all of your friends. You know. Uh, engaged tones should not be mistaken for overly zealous or falsely happy tones, which can be tuned out or offensive to tone-sensitive auditory nerves. Meaning, hi, bro, hi! You know, that is a very high pitch. Be aware that that doesn't need to happen. Talking over things in the classroom or over because you're nervous. Oh, I'm so blah, blah, blah. Uh, being that animated and a bit uncomfortable is um, is going to show. In fact, I just heard of a study in Sweden that proved that kids are not, kids on the spectrum are not uh, under um, engaging. They are over engaging in all the energy and the uh, emotions that are in the room. So, um, which is what I've always thought, that my kids were just very sensitive to energy and it wasn't necessarily sounds, but it was emotions and that they were just overwhelmed with how much they were taking in, so it was, they had to t tune out certain things and uh, sometimes stim to just kind of manage all of the um, neurological stimulation going on. So, another thing is chill body language. So, um, you want to be neither aggressive, neither aggressive, demanding, nor fearful. A lot of people are fairly fearful when they enter situations with kids uh, because they've maybe heard uh, their background and they've heard they've maybe hit someone or they've had a chance to bite or they are self-injurious. These, you know, all these technical terms that outline uh, our kids before people even meet them. And to me, um, they pick up on it. So if you can be as chilled as possible, I always use the term, um, put on your surfer voice. And uh, surfers just, you know, in, in the stereotypical way, is like chill, you know, hey, dude. And I, I swear that's um, Justin's favorite uh, saying is dude. I think it was one of his first words, <laughs> dude. Um, so firm, accepting, deep tones without extreme reaction, but always up for an adventure with people and learning. So that's how I would describe a surfer tone. Uh, and then um, just know that in order to engage, all ways are right. You don't have to say, no, that's not right, or no, that's not what I want. You just say, oh, okay, and then redirect to, well, I wanted you to do this, so could you try again? You know, that's how I usually redirect. Um, and when you are being manipulated by one of these wonderful characters like my son, uh, just don't be afraid to say that you're feeling manipulated. You know, I'm feeling manipulated. I feel like you're trying to manipulate me by what you're doing and I don't like it. I don't choose planned ignoring because I feel like I like to speak to my child about what I'm observing. And I want other people to be as straightforward with them as well so they can better. So I feel like the more straightforward people are with them about how they're feeling about the particular situation, the more ability my child will have to assess their own feelings, which are so abstract uh, in, a, in a concrete thinker's world. So another one is stay one step ahead at all times. So, you know, that's always motivating when somebody's surprising you a bit uh, and you're one step ahead of, uh, you know, you can't have long pauses in your teaching. It seems to really disengage uh, the child, especially kids uh, that have their mind going at the rate that children do uh, on the spectrum. Um, and short and sweet, is, uh, cl is clarity necessary on this one? So that's what I always ask myself, is clarity necessary on this one or is it just good to be in the moment? Um, uh, when you ask for something, clearly, when you get an answer, respect it and go for it. Uh, for instance, if, if, so, if I were to ask Justin, can I use that pencil? Justin, may I use that pencil? And he looks at me and he doesn't give it to me. Okay. Or if he if I say, Justin, do you want to go? And then he's like, and he acts like he wants to go. He's totally down with going, and or he said he wants to go. 
either tell him how long his wait is going to be, you know, okay, we are going to go as long as we do this, this, and this. We have to wait because we're going to wait for Brianna. We're going to do this and get our shoes on and then we'll go. So I'm constantly talking about the next steps um, when waiting occurs after an, a question. If I'm asking Justin if he wants to go, he has this um, need to have everything now. So waiting is the greatest challenge, as we know, with kids on the spectrum. So um, be prepared to act when you ask and also explain uh, in tangible terms. Um, words first. We always use words first. Um, and sometimes the words are animated and sometimes they're like, dude, ah, you know, and sometimes they're very chilled out. But um, always verbal directions and descriptions first. So I would like you to take your hand off of my arm, Justin. That's what I say. I don't want you to grab my arm. I want you to use your words. So then, of course, the opportunity to have a communication device at that moment is essential. You must have some form of communication for your child. That's a great way to engage gurus is to give them a voice. That's the end. It's a long one. I hope you learned something. Um, other ways to engage them, I'm going to give you this last few. They increase the meaning, um, use exact language. For example, look to your left. Um, look o in, instead of look over there. So always doing things left to right really helps. Like for instance, always putting the left shoe on when the children are small. Starting with the left to right is really a great tool in working into um, reading school skills because reading in our country is left to right in our main language of English and so and I believe almost all of the, um, the major languages spoken in the US um, so I like Spanish left to right um, so definitely um, teach your guru um, skills that will help them and translate into all settings, uh, all of the learning tools that are physical. We also use like lots of physical uh, exaggerations to, to teach. For instance, when we're doing the ABCs and I just go A, B, C, if I go A and I go B, um, Justin's more likely to do it because it's kinesthetic, it feels good, and it just gets him loud. And so um, that's a uh, and it's more animated, it's more engaging, uh, it's more interesting to watch. <laughs> and it may be weird. We're okay with weird. So, peace, love, and hopefully you made it through this entire presentation and I have more for you.